guys, in this video we're making Judy Hops from Zootopia. So for this I'm using this modelling paste here. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but what I'm going to do is put links in the description box below. We're going to create an armature out of wire to build it onto. And I've printed off my little picture of Judy Hops here. And I've also got a cake to me. Taking my wire, and now I've got quite a thick wire. I'm going to bend it in half and I'm going to use my picture as a bit of a guide. So this will form like the internal structure. So if you imagine this to be like the bones of our legs and our body. I'll just bend another piece just to thicken it. I will put links in the description box below to all the wires and everything that I've used. Now just to strengthen my wire I've got a bit of florist tape and I'm just going to wrap this around both pieces to connect them together. Now I'm just bending another piece that will connect to the legs to create a piece that will run through the body. Just twist it together so that it holds in place and then just trim off the top bit as it doesn't want to go too far up through our head. So I had added arms through as a wire frame but it's up to you if you want to do this or not. I decided halfway through that I didn't like the arms where I'd put them as the wires and I ended up cutting them off. And again, I'm just adding a bit more wire throughout it now, bending it round just to keep everything in place and to strengthen it. Wrap more florist tape around your little wire structure that you've made. So you can see now that I've, I've taken the, the arms off this and I'm just going to add them in the modelling paste of when we're making it. And I'm going to mark on roughly where her feet come to so that when I push it into the polystyrene dummy I know how far to push them. So I'm cutting off the ends. I'm just using scissors. I would usually use wire cutters but I'm not sure where I've put mine. And we'll push that into the polystyrene dummy. And I'm just going to check it's roughly similar in size to my picture. So I've now dyed the modelling paste in a grey. I've just used my normal sugar flare colours for this and I've rolled te two teardrop shapes. So trying to form a basic foot shape here with the teardrops. And then I've just got a little bit of white and that's gonna go on the very end of that teardrop, so the fat end of it. We'll do that for both. And then taking a modeling tool, what we're gonna do is put in some little dints to create toes. And then a smaller dint in the middle of each toe, just to give me a guide as to where I'll put her little nails when I add them in a bit. And if you want a fair effect, just gently go over the whole foot with your modelling tool, just creating small little lines. And I'm just putting a little slit at the heel of each foot so that I can slide that around my wire and then just give it a good push back into place to seal that cut that you've made. For the legs, I've dyed quite a large amount of my modelling paste in a deep blue and roll like a really long teardrop shape. So we're keeping it quite slim where the ankle is and quite chunky up near the hip. And just as we did with the ankle, we're putting a slit down the leg so that we can open that up and place it around the wire frame that we've made. And this is where sometimes I squash it out of place a little bit. Now this modelling paste, when you've had it in your hands a while, does go quite soft and if it's cold in the room you'll find that it does harden quite quickly. So smooth down that line that you've got either with your finger or with the back of the, the modelling tool. Do exactly the same for the second leg. Now she's got a bit of a bum crack where I've joined the two together. So I'm just adding an additional piece in there and smoothing it out across her bum. Add a little bit more now around the waist so that when we sit a body on, it will sit nicely onto her trousers. Take a paler blue for your modeling paste and we're gonna create the body now. So roll a cylinder of the blue. Again, put a slit down the middle and we'll wrap that around the wire for the body. Now you might find that you've added too much but shape it first and we can always trim any extra off and then smooth down any lines. Giving her a nice slim waist, taking a bit off the top. I'm adding a seam to her top just using the end of my modeling tool. Same at the other side. So for the feet, you want either a black or a really deep blue and we've rolled that out nice and thin. I've cut a straight line and then we're just gonna push that around so that it seals at the back of the heel. Now obviously it's a bit big so we're going to trim some off, so trim at either side of a foot at the bottom and then what we're also going to do is trim around the ankle and just put a line across the front with your modelling tool again and you can put one around the ankle as well. I'm going to put a second line a little bit further up the foot, roll out another thin piece and we just want to cut a small rectangle, one for each foot and that's just going to stick on the top of the foot like that. And I'm just putting a dint in around the heel, creating a bit of a curve. So to the knee pads, we want a grey and a black. Just roll two balls, give them a bit of a squish, and then push with three fingers to kind of create a bit of a triangle shape. Do the same with the other one. And then with the grey, repeat 
but slightly smaller so that the grey will fit in the middle of the black one. Just take a cocktail stick and poke a little hole in each corner. And we're going to push this on where her kneecaps would be. So the, actually, if you look at your picture, they're quite low down on the leg next to the arms. And because I'd removed the wire and one of the arms is stuck out straight, I've added a cocktail stick now at this point, which will hold our arm up. So back to the light blue. Roll a long cylinder. We're going to cut it to the length we want it for the arm. And I'm just putting a slight indentation in the centre of the arm where her elbow would be. Just widen the top of that arm for where it's going to fit onto her body and I'm pushing this onto the cocktail stick. If it looks a bit long when you've got it in place, just trim a bit off the wrist. And I've just taken a small bit of cocktail stick that I'm just going to push into the bottom end of her arm so that there's something there to attach the hand to when we add the hand later. Create the same shape for the other arm, but what we'll do is we'll bend this one. And because it's not being held upright in the air like the other one, you might find that you're all right without adding a cocktail stick to that. So I'm just adding an extra bit of light blue to the front of her chest, just to give her a bit more shape. Now I'm not too worried about the joins because she's gonna have a bulletproof vest that goes over this and will cover it. You want a really deep blue this time. So I've just dyed this one, roll it in, and I've cut a slight curved edge, which is gonna be the bottom of her vest. And I'll just lay it against her. And then I'm gonna trim up the side of the body on each side cut around where you want the neckline to be and again around the armholes and you're just going to repeat exactly the same on the back and this vest should cover up any joins and things that we have on the body. Just run a slight line around the very edge of the top with your modelling tool and around the armholes. Roll and cut some little rectangles that will be like the fastenings on her top and we'll put them on the sides and also on her shoulders. Roll another long thin piece of black and this is going to be her belt so we'll wrap this around her waist trimming it where it meets. Now I've rolled another piece that's slightly wider than the belt and I'm going to trim lots of tiny thin rectangles. Now I'm just adding a little bit of water to this to make sure they stick and place these lengthways over the belt so that they become your belt loops. Now roll a really thin piece of grey and this is going to become the buckle so we'll lay it over the belt and then I'm just going to push it round either side of the belt and just trim it off either side just make sure it's nice and neat and in line and then you want a really really tiny piece of grey that's going to go in the centre of the belt so I'm going to add some holes to the belt all the way across and then I'm going to take a small piece of the grey just like we did with the buckle and create a tiny little semicircle coming off the bottom of the belt now I've rolled some black and we're going to create little pockets for the belt. So cut some rectangles and then you can put some little flaps on the top of the pockets. Now do them in different sizes. So you've got some a bit thicker, some a bit thinner. And add a tiny bit of grey for the little button. I'm going to push those onto the belt. Then we're going to do the same for the walkie-talkie, starting with a little rectangle. But we're going to add a little bit of grey to the top of it. So I'm just trying to draw a square on that piece of grey so it looks like the screen. Push that onto the black pocket that we've made. And then I've rolled a larger rectangle that I'm cutting a piece out of. Now, this one's a bit fiddly with it being so small. And this is sort of the top flap to the pocket. So try and carefully get that over your grey piece. Wrapping the thinner bits to the back. And then you can pull them off where they come to the back. Because the back won't be seen. Add a little grey dot, as we did with the others, for the little button on the pocket. And again, just push that on the belt. So that's what your belt should now look like. So adding the toenails, we've dyed a really tiny bit of the modelling paste in a pink. Now I've rolled some tiny, tiny little sausage shapes. They're a bit small to pick up with my fingers, so I've picked them up with a brush. And just put them in those dints that we made on each toe earlier. Now for the head, because it's quite big, I'm going to use a piece of polystyrene in the middle. I'm going to wrap my grey around the polystyrene. So you can see I've put a cocktail stick coming out the bottom just to keep a hole open in that piece of polystyrene. And what I'm going to do is just dint halfway down the head with my finger. This is where the eyes are going to be. By putting a dint there, it creates a little bit sticking out below, which will become the nose. So either with your fingers or the balling tool, create some eye sockets. She's got quite large eyes, so make sure they're reasonably big. And then I've rolled some of the white. Try and get it the size of those eye sockets. And it wants to be reasonably flat, as it doesn't want to poke out too much from those eye sockets. And just try and put a little line above the white to create a bit of an eyelid. Putting a line in either direction across the nose, which is going to be my guideline for where I'm going to stick her nose. 
and I'm just sort of pushing the nose upwards towards that mark that I've just made. So I've put my finger above, hold it in place and then pushed upwards with the modelling tool. And I've dyed a much paler grey now, which is going to create under the nose and the mouthpiece. So push that on nice and tight, leaving it thicker up near the nose. And then use your modelling tool to create the mouth. Now some of these bits are quite difficult to explain how to do, so I'm hoping that you'll be able to see from the video a little bit better than using my description. So we're going to put in the mouth and just squish a little bit to shape it how you want it to look. Keep referring back to your diagram to see what you should be doing with it as well. And then I'm simply going to add lots of tiny little lines for the fur all over this face. I'm adding a little bit more of the deeper grey just above the nose to give it a bit more shape. And I'm just adding a little wrinkle at the top. So put little fur lines again all over the face. Now I'm just using the pale blue now for the eyes now. She had blue eyes on the picture that I printed off but I believe she actually has purple eyes so you might want to change yours for purple. So roll the purple or the blue nice and thin and we're going to cut out two circles. Stick one in your eye, just do the same with the other eye. Now I've put it quite near the bottom so just trim any extra off the bottom of that eye. Now at this point she looks a little bit bog eyed. And I'm going to do the same again with the black, rolling a little circle, a bit smaller than the blue one, and put it in the middle of the blue. Give it a good push down in place. Now I've rolled a really thin piece of the black, which is going to go around the edge of the eye. So I've just added a dab of water around the edge of that eye so it sticks. And we're going to put the pointy thin end of this piece near the centre of her eye, bringing it round. And I'm pinching it off where it comes to the far side of her eye. And I'm trying to thin that very edge just a little bit with my finger so that I can bring it round and underneath the eye so you might need to use the modelling tool to bring it round and then what I'm going to do is pull my modelling tool through that piece of black and outwards so that it creates the effect of eyelashes if you want to separate the eyelashes out a little bit just cut tiny tiny triangles out with the knife then we're going to add her eyebrow so I've just rolled a really long thin teardrop shape and you're going to push that down so it's nice and flat and then we can run little hair lines through it with the modelling tool, like so. Now, I'm just deepening the eye colour a little bit with some food colouring, so I'm just painting a bit of sugar flare in a deep blue around the edge of the blue bit of the eye, just to make her eyes stand out a little bit more. Take a tiny piece of white, roll into a ball, and we'll push that into the eye, which is the light, or should look like the light reflecting in her eye. So I've done exactly the same now with the second eye, so she's starting to come together a little bit more now. And looking a little bit less bog eyed. So, I'm using a skin tone for the nose. So, I've dyed up just a little bit of my modelling paste and rolled a tiny piece for the nose. So, push that in place. And then, with your modelling tool, we're going to add some nostrils. And I've rolled a really tiny, thin piece of the same colour that's going to go in place for her mouth. And I'm just pushing that in with the modelling tool because I don't want a lot of the pink showing for her mouth. So, I've just got a dry brush now. And I've got on it some edible dusts, now I've got a bit of black on mine. Again, I'll put links in the description box below to what I've used. And I'm just brushing this onto her face lightly, making it a little bit darker anywhere where she needs a bit of shading. So the base of her nose, just under her eyes. Now I'm taking it up the centre of her face a little bit and just above her eyebrows. So keep shading till you're happy that you've got it deep enough. So I'm happy with that now. I'm going to roll piece of my grey again for the neck. Now it's quite a chunky one. So roll thin some of the blue, the pale blue that we've used for her top. And I've cut a long thin bit and this is going to become a collar for her. Just wrap this around the neck, making sure it comes to the front. So I'm on to the badge now. So cut out a black rectangle or square. And I've, I've kind of got this honey gold colour that I've rolled out thin. And what I'm going to do is, is cut another rectangle, but I'm just going to make sure it's a little bit smaller than the one I've got. It's not going to stay a rectangle shape, it's just so that for the size I know it's smaller than the black badge that we've got. Now I'm going to cut like a triangle at the bottom, starting to shape our badge. And just round those corners off that you've got. And I'm going to cut two triangles, one from each side now, not very deep. Just cutting off the top corners and trying to get some little dints in the top. And again, just by cutting out tiny triangles, just push that around to be happy with the shape. And that is going to go in the centre of my black that I've cut out and I'm just going to give it a push down with my modelling tool as well as adding a little line all the way around the edge of that badge. So I've used a round plunger cutter to so just put an indentation in the centre of my badge. Then I've used some of my blue, 
cut out a little circle and just push that in the center of that indentation that we've made. Then I've got a star cutter, just a tiny star cutter. So we want a bit of the yellowy gold color that we've used for the badge and push that into the center of that blue circle that we've just cut out. Add a tiny strip of the badge color now on the top, just above the blue circle and we'll do the same on the bottom just below. And then I've got some food coloring and a really thin brush and we're just gonna paint on the writing. Now it's quite small, so it is quite fiddly. So once you've painted that on, give it a little bit of time to dry, otherwise we'll smudge the writing and also the badge needs a little bit of time to harden. So I've left mine for half an hour before starting the hand. For the hand, we want some of the gray. So start with a ball, quite a chunky sized ball. We can take more off if needed in a bit. And I've cut out a triangle and that smaller bit's gonna be my thumb and the bigger bit I'm gonna cut now into fingers. So two little slices open that up so she has four fingers all together including the thumb so round off the fingers so you've not got any sharp edges on them and just pull the thumb out a little bit so that you know the hands gonna be wide enough to fit that badge so my badge just slots in there and then I'm adding a little piece of white to the end of each finger and again you can run tiny little lines through to show the fur repeat that with each finger and the thumb and you can add a tiny little dot or line with your modeling tool in the end of each finger ready for when we put our claws in and I've pushed that hand now onto that little bit of cocktail stick that was coming out of the end of her arm. Give it a good push down. So I've made another little badge, so this one's much smaller than the big one. Try and create the same shape as we did for the big one, but on a smaller scale. I'm going to push this onto her chest. Just add some little lines around the edge again. I'm not going to add too much detail with it being so small. Create another hand, the same way you did with the first one. I'm going to bend her fingers kind of back a little bit. Add whites to the end of them, again the same as we did with the other one. And we're going to try and squeeze this now under the arm. Just be careful that you don't knock the arm too much. Give it a good push down in place so that it doesn't drop off. Now if you end up with an untidy edge between the wrist and the hand, don't worry too much because we're going to cover that now. You want a black or a dark blue. We're going to roll it out thin. I've cut a straight edge and what I'm going to do is just put that, can you see over the wrist? So it's covering any joins. And then I'm rolling a really long thin sausage shape, nice and thin, which is going to go on the very edge of that wrist piece that we've added. And do that on the other arm as well. And we want a bit of grey rolled out thin. And we're cutting some little rectangles and these are going to fit on her wrist piece. So put these on the wrist, give it a good push down in place. So it doesn't go all the way around, it just sort of the top half. Same on the other arm as well. So for the tail. I've got a bit of dark grey and a bit of light grey and we're trying to push these together. Now it's quite flat on one edge but that's fine. And then we're going to push in lots of lines for the fur. Now they can be a bit deeper than the lines that we've put on the rest of her. And that's going to push onto her bum, give it a good push in place. And I'm adding the pale pink, so the same as we did for her feet, we're going to add this to her hands to give her little claws. Just tiny. Now for the ears, I've got the deeper of the grey that we've used. And you're going to roll a bit of an oval. It's a very rough oval shape. And you can put lines in for the hair. And now I've got the same colour that I used on the nose. And we're rolling a long thin piece and we're flattening it and trying to rub that into the centre of the ear. Now give it a rub as much as you can and try and pull through it with your modelling tool to create a fur effect and blend the pink into the grey. And you can put a few lines on the back of the ears as well and the edges. And what I'm going to do is add a bit of dusting again for the shading. So I'm using black on this. So I'm going near the bottom of my ear and then push that in place. Now I've stuck one on already. So this one, I've kind of folded it at the bottom. Can you see? To pinch it into more of a teardrop shape. And I'm going to push that onto the back of the head. So once you've got the ears on, she should be finished. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video and would like to see more, please click on the images of the other videos suggested. Also, please do subscribe to my channel using the button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. You can also visit my cake website and my Facebook page to see more cakes and ideas.